All right, welcome everybody back to another episode of the Power of Story podcast. If you're listening on Thrive After Sports, thank you for tuning in there. This is Taj Deshaun, and today we're here with a very special guest. We got Mr. Graham Metchart. What's going on, Graham? Taj, what's happening, man? Thanks for having me, man. Thank you. Oh, man, it's a pleasure. I'm honored that you agreed to jump on and do this. I know this is going to be an awesome episode for all of our listeners. Uh, for anybody listening, just in case you've been, you've been living under a rock or something, you don't know who Graham Metchart is, I'm going to go ahead and give him a quick intro and then we'll dive right into the story. So Graham Batchard is one of the world's leading mental performance coaches. He's worked with some of the NBA's best athletes, including Aaron Gordon, Ben Simmons, Carl Anthony Towns, and Andrew Wiggins, just to name a few. Graham creates mental training programs and online courses to help athletes, coaches, parents, entrepreneurs, and working professionals take their mental game to the next level. He's also the author of Play Present, a mental skills training program for professional players, professional basketball players. His mission is to bring mental training to the masses so that anyone not just professional athletes and CEOs can learn to perform better and experience more joy in the process, man. So before we dive into this story, Graham, uh, I was telling you before we started recording, man, uh, for anybody who's followed me long enough or listens to the podcast, you know that my whole mission is to help athletes transition into the next stages of their lives. And as I was going through, that's the, the mission behind my coaching, behind the podcast, behind the book that just came out. And I was telling Graham before we got rolling, when I was going through that transition, I was diving headfirst into personal development and learning about mindfulness, learning about meditation. And Graham was one of those people that once I stumbled upon his work, I just consumed it, everything, every video, I got the book, you know, every interview <laughs> I was in there and it helped me, it helped me transition. And then when I started coaching, which is what we're going to dive into right now, Graham's story to how he reached the level he's at now and has been able to have such a huge impact through his work that got me inspired. It's a true, a true story of starting from the ground up, putting the work in and really diving in head first. So I'm gonna shut up now, Graham. I'm gonna let you get into it. <laughs> Can we just- man, I'm so humbled, man. Like uh, the thing that blows me away the most about all this, I had no idea all this was gonna happen. I, I'm simply a vessel, you know, and I've been devoted to opening myself up since someone taught this stuff to me when I was 19, you know, and that's like 23 years ago at this point. And I remember when they taught me, I was like, oh, my God, I, my whole life, I have to share this. And so as you say, like my resume and stuff, I'm sitting here going, damn, who's he talking about? Like that dude sounds <laughs> off the hook. And I'm like, oh, he's talking about me. And then realize I, I don't even identify with it is because I'm blown away by it because what's coming through me. I, I'm just a vessel. Right. I just transfer the information. I'm, I'm not the information. I'm not the actual thing. So I'm a servant, you know, and. Um, I, I'm just serving forever. So to see what it's doing and how it's impacting you. When my first teacher taught me this stuff, Taj, it was the same thing. I sat there and was like, oh my God, this is going to get me through a hole. And if I work on this stuff and practice meditating and do this stuff, man, this stuff works. And it changed my life, you know? And so I just was like, oh, I'm supposed to let other people know about this thing, but I'm not the thing. I'm just a servant of the thing. And, uh, I think the thing I take credit for is being a good servant, you know, like for sure. Like I I bust my ass and serve, but I let it come through me and everyone has access to this stuff. Like you found, right? You found it through a depression and bam, all of a sudden you start applying your athletic training to like this inner work. And you're like, oh, with discipline, devotion, and yeah, you got to stick with it. There's no overnight success. Come on, man. Like, you know how that works. So the fact that it takes me 10, 12 years to be an overnight success, it should work like that because- it shouldn't just be like a quick thing because now, you know, if I do stick with this, if I stay devoted, all those principles work and then things just go beyond what you could ever imagine. But the whole thing for me is devotion to some stuff. Some, someone taught me when I was 19 and I was like, this is the greatest stuff I've ever heard in my life. And the person who taught it to me ran like a healing center. So it wasn't even like sports psychology. I wasn't even close to sports psychology yet. I was I was deep in some stuff, you know, stuff. I was even like, I don't even know how to share this stuff because what if they think I'm weird or like, you know what I mean? So, (laughs) so basically running it through basketball, which is what I loved was like how I tried to normalize it, you know, because I, I was taught to it from, I was taught to it by people who never really necessarily made a team in their life. And I don't mean they're part of a group, but like, I, I have a certain nature in me that's like, you know, I like to win and stuff. So I resonate with the crowd that maybe comes from that space. But what I'm teaching, man, these principles, uh, come on, man, this is abundance. This is love. This is that we are vibration. 
We are spiritual beings living the human experience. Um, I operate from that plane. I was scared to say that for a long time, but that's exactly how I operate. And I'm simply devoted to that. And I've learned some principles a while ago that I was like, damn, this work, you know? <laughs> so it's just like, I'm, I, I, and the thing about me is once I'm aware, like I'm, I'm not the smartest in the room, but I'm pretty quick to learn who is. And then, and then I'm good at being coached and I'm good at listening. And so I learn from everyone. So I, I, I can hear when something pings, when I'm like, I was supposed to hear that sentence, you know? And then I take it and I'll like devote myself 10 years to it. And just for, you know, and just like, inch it along, inch it along, inch it along. And that's just a work ethic, you know? So I'm just a good servant. I'm devoted to the mental game. And my role in this world is to translate it to people, make it easy. And uh, I mean, man, I find myself making music now. I, I would have never thought that was gonna happen. And you know, you just keep serving and it just keeps unfolding in ways you can't comprehend, you know? <laughs> So. Yeah, man. Yeah. And the music is <laughs> awesome. It's great to see you have having a uh, dove into that head first too, because you were already doing such great work. And then you sent me a couple mindset music tracks uh, mm. last week and I had a chance to listen. I've been listening to them okay. nonstop, man, before I oh, right during on, a workout. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I appreciate you sending those over and it's just really cool to see you blend those two together because I think that, you know, especially athletes, like you said, you working with athletes and using that as performance or mindset training, you're really teaching, like you said, love, connection, abundance, and using, you got to, you got to start with the, the uh, athletic side, the performance to kind of sneak <laughs> it in there with, with masculine people or just people in yeah. athletics. And I love the music side of it. And I, I really wanted to start with your journey. Like you were talking about when you were 19, right? Because that's one of the best things about it is I love having people on the show who overcame something themselves, were able to bounce back from it. And then, start teaching that to others. I think that's always a beautiful thing when you turn your, your pain into your purpose. So mm, take us wow. back to when you were 19. How did that start, man? How did, how did the yeah. whole journey of Grand Bench Art start back then? Man, well said. Um, it was 1997. I remember it vividly. I'm at Cabrillo Junior College. I'm playing basketball. I'm walking through the campus. Um, the season had kind of wound down. It was a tough year. Just And my whole life was felt like it was crumbling. My mom and I's relationship was falling apart. And it was just me and her back home. So I really didn't have any place to go back to. I was in a junior college and all my friends got into like four year schools. So I was, I was just like lost in life. Um, I had anxiety that I had felt my whole life that I never learned how to deal with. And the only way I dealt with it was kind of try to stay one step ahead, you know, like run, like keep ahead of it, which is anxiety in itself. So I, I just remember going, I can't do this anymore, man. This baggage is too much. I felt a weight on my back. So I reached out to my mom on a payphone and was like, I need help. So the thing that was so powerful was I surrendered. I was like, I, I can't, I can't carry this anymore. Like, what is this in life? I can't just keep going forward without like something's happening. You know what I mean? Like something inside of me is happening and I need help. And I asked my mom and then she said some magic words, Taj. She said, did you know you could rewire your brain? And I was like, I don't know what that means, but I heard hope. And then she introduced me to my first teacher, you know, Jocelyn, who ran the San Francisco Healing Center. And uh, I walked in there in 1997, just super low, super down, just gone. And I remember walking into the room and it had a unique smell to it. Now I know that smell to be health. I didn't know it at the time. There's, um, there was a smell to it, man. And, uh, and just the way she cooked <laughs> and everything about it, you know. And so, um, you know, when something smells off, you can tell it smells off. I didn't know that something, something could smell so right on such a deep level that it was like nutrients my body was craving. It was, it was like on a level that like information I needed. Cause I went in there thinking the world's ending. I got all this shit going on. And I remember looking up at her and she was just in a different dimension and call it love, call it consciousness. She was just looking at me. It seemed just was looked at me. And as soon as I looked at her, I was like, Oh, wherever she is, I would like to go because all mm. my fear and worry, everything that was coming through me, she knew it, what she already was in and she knew the answer to it all. And what I thought the answers were, she was not laughing at, but she was gently helping me know that like, you're okay. And she still hadn't said a word yet, you know? And I was like, what is going on? And that's the first time I experienced someone harmonize the vibration in a room without really saying a word, you know? And, and because my vibration was all over the place, you know? And then what she was teaching me to do was just start to manage this stuff. And she said, close your eyes. Didn't tell me we were gonna meditate. She just said, close your eyes. And start, we start breathing and I'm like doing meditation and I'm like, what is this? And then all of a sudden I can feel myself start to hone it in, you know? And I started to get a, a, 
I started, I, it was my first step of managing my emotions. They were just running wild before, right? Just running wild. And I remember at the end of our session, she was like, okay, here's the deal going forward. Now that you know what being present is, you've learned to breathe, you've learned to close your eyes, all the work is in. I now felt like I had, I was like, okay, I got something to help me deal with this. She said, you have to practice every day. And I was like, this is a skill. And then it clicked in my head like, oh, I got it. This is a skill. Every day I'm going to practice this. And so that was at 19 and uh, went back, you know, to school. Still, I didn't play basketball. I took two years off basketball and just focused on school, kind of just getting myself right, you know, like working on my inner self. And things started to get better for me. I could manage it. I could deal. I could cope. I started to like just transform a little bit. Then I ended up getting into UC Santa Cruz and was like, well, let me see if I still want to hoop, man, because you know, like I still can play. And like all of a sudden I wasn't, it wasn't like ruining my life because I'd re-healed myself. So I realized I still love basketball. So I walked onto the team at UC Santa Cruz and I was the 13th or 14th guy on a 15 man team. But my mindset was second to none. And I was like, whatever I just learned from that hippie lady in San Francisco that I haven't told anyone about, holy shit, man, this shit is, not only is it, it's great to heal and I got all that and I feel whole, but it is lethal out here because you cannot touch me. You can't, I'm present. Now you may be better at basketball than me, but damn it, if I center on the present and I'm here, nobody can take me from that. So I had discovered something that was beat. Like I, I went and do this work to heal. And that was my first taste in sports where I was like, there's something here, man. Um, and so that was where the seed was planted. And then when I finished Santa Cruz in 2001, Got my first job selling gym memberships after in Oakland. And I met a friend uh, named Donald Foyle, who was playing for the Warriors at the time. And he said a magic sentence to me. He said, Graham, have you ever heard of sports psychology? And Taj, as soon as I, I'd never heard of that. As soon as I heard those two words, it was like, bing. And it was like, that's it. Like my heart was like, that's it. And I was like, uh, is that like some Jedi stuff or like viewing with pressure? He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. And immediately I knew I had already had all the training on a level that most people had never experienced. And I was like, uh, oh, okay. I was like, sports psychology? Because I, I, it was basically like sports psychology felt like a lightweight fight and I was a heavyweight. And I was like, bro, I have principles right. from like, these aren't sports psych. This is like ancient 16,000 years ago principles from like yogis that like could meditate for days on end and, and, and tell you where like the universe, you know, all kinds of shit. Sounds crazy. <laughs> but I'm running the principles and it's working. So here's, here's where it comes in. I go, okay, it's sports psychology is how I tie together what I've learned in sports, right? That's how I normalize this, how I bring this training together. And then the vision came through that, okay, my work now is to normalize mental training, go volunteer with the JV basketball team in the city you're from, San Francisco, get your master's degree at night and use basketball and teach this stuff through a game. And then that's, that was 2004. And that's when it really like, I just never look back, you know, and it just became like, it makes me want to cry. I mean, the service is so real. I was like, I have to do that. You know what I mean? I would pay to do that. Someone was like, you know, a JV basketball team, you get paid like a thousand dollars a year and you're going to graduate school and that costs 30,000 a year. Do the math. And I was like, fuck mm. the math. I'm doing mm. life, bro. Every, I don't know why everyone gets into math problem, but I, but I beat that shit. And that's me being real with you, Taj. Like when I did that work in 19, I done whooped that shit's ass. And I was like, math. <laughs> and I was like, you care about math? Math is a gold-plated prison. And I already knew that. And I was like, I get it, man. I'm not saying you don't need uh, food and a house. I'm not saying that. So, but once you establish that, people still live in a gold-plated prison doing a math problem. And I had found the magic. And I was like, if I can devote myself to this magic, it's going to take a while. I will flip it to where everyone sees what this is. And then it'll be like, now you don't have a choice but to come towards it because Let's face it, we, we need to see it sometimes. I came to it in a crisis. I don't expect you came to it in a crisis. We got lucky, man. Mo if you're in the middle ground, if you're not in a crisis, you're almost in this middle ground where you're like, damn, that person is screwed because how are you gonna get it? Get, get, how's this doorway gonna open for you? Say you're doing math and math is working for you a little bit. Then you kind of just groove into this mediocre math game and you're kind of in the middle anxiously doing math problems your whole life instead of, uh, blowing that out of the water and doing magic which is the foundation for math so i basically was like if i can help a basketball team win or teach kids how to do this and make a language that makes sense i already know this wins 
I'm not even that good in basketball. And I was the captain of UC Santa Cruz's team just from this shit, bro. I can barely <laughs> dribble and shoot. I can barely do anything. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit. You know, I'm not going to make a team, but I'm not like, you know what I mean? Like, but mindset wise, I was like, well, you can't break me. So if I could teach this to people that were really good at basketball or something, oh my God, like that'll win. So I went to Mission High School in San Francisco, you know, uh, where I'm from. And I was like, okay, I'll be there four years and then I'll move on. But after four years, Taj, everything was kicking in, man. Like the culture was so strong. The language had kicked in. Play present showed up. Next play speed showed up. All these linguistics that just came out of nowhere. And the players bought into it and we won. And so I ended up staying six years to stick with it. And uh, it's, I just, I never thought it would get as big as it was going to be, be, you know, I was just here helping kids playing hoops. And then 2017 mission high school wins the state championship in California. And it's the first public school in the history of San Francisco to ever win a state title. And that's 115 years of basketball. And it's unbelievable. It's almost mind boggling, but that's the first team to ever do it. And next play speed, that ability to be present was like the DNA of that team, you know, it was the foundation. So I basically like this stuff to me by hippies you know what i mean i was like okay this stuff exists i just applied it, it was like it works these other kids applied it out of high school where we were coaching and man they took off and i met little aaron gordon when he was 11 years old and he just like was curious about it i didn't know who he was going to be and by the time he was 13 14 you had an idea you know and he bought into being present and he just took that shit to another level you know and so it's like they just took it and ran. My job as a servant was to give it to them. And I remember uh, most of the kids at Mission High School, now they're all like 30 years old. You know, they're like in their late 20s, they're 30. At the time, and I'm cool with a few of them, you know, like we're still close. Some of them train me, like they're just, they're great, we're friends. And they were like, we thought you were crazy at the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> they're like, every day you're talking all this mindset. They're like, we thought you were crazy. Man. And I was like, you know, I knew I wasn't crazy, but I, it was okay that you didn't believe in it. It's okay. I knew my role was to stick with it because how could you believe in this stuff? You have to see it. And now they get in their late twenties, you know, they're like, my God, man, it's everything, you know, like it's everything. And they look back to all the winning we were doing and they were like, it was, it was, it was at all. So that's how it affected me. I just wanted to teach it and give it. And I gave it to where I love, man. So I gave it to basketball and uh, most incredible journey ever, man, uh, doing it with basketball. I still love basketball, which was my promise, you know, cause you can get to a, you can get to a high level in something, and, you know, it gets political or there's a ton of money or whatever, all that shit. And I was like, man, stay, stay in love with this, man. It's the love that's the key, the vibration. So I still have a great love for basketball. Um, I took that shit all the way to being the director of mental training for the jazz for a couple of years. It was an incredible experience. But, man, I had to live on the road, you know. And, you know, I'm in my 40s. Mm -hmm. I'm married with kids. And I was like, I don't want to be away from my family all the time. You know what I mean? So. You have to make decisions that are that, that ground you, you know? So I'm always grounded in what actually means something to me. So as stuff blows up, you know, I'm like, okay, but I know what actually means something to me. You know, I don't want to be away from my kids living in Salt Lake City or something like that, you know? So you make hard decisions. It's super vulnerable because, because I'm with service, I have to stay with it, you know? And so right. uh, like at Mission High School, I got to a point in the first six years, they were like, just be a teacher here for life. Like, here's a teaching job. You got it. Like, you, you know, we'll win every year. And I was like, my God, I got to go. Like, my work here is done. And so most of my, my <laughs> gut-wrenching work is after I hit a level, I go through a two- to three-year period of reinventing myself. And during that two- to three-year period, it is, bro, Tosh, it is gut-wrenching. I mean, it's the shit I barely – I'm just now starting to talk about that process with people. Because while I'm going through it, it takes, it takes everything I have to go through it. Um, I mean, to then leave the NBA, and now I've reinvented myself making music. That's been a three-year process. I've done so much therapy to let go of basketball, to grieve it, um, to allow it to move so I can keep growing in life. You know, because what I've noticed is you get to like a level of something. If you hold on to that, you stifle everything. And so my bet was always with energy, not with the math. So as math, call math like a title to, you know, like director of mental training for the NBA or, you know, that's like a title people can like hold on to. I was like, if I hold on to that shit, I'm done. I got to keep surfing this energy and keep doing it. And so the last couple of years, all of my therapy, all the work I've been doing is allowing myself to grieve so I can let go of something, you know, and then keep going in life and hopefully i get to do this many more times and it's the process of growth and it's just gut it's it's uncomfortable it's vulnerable 
uh, but that's what's been going on the last couple of years of my life. And it, this felt like 1997 when I first got, when I first went through this first transformation. So what I've learned is you go through these years in your life, right? And, and hopefully it doesn't stop. You know, when you do the same workout over and over again, after a while, it's kind of boring. So you kind of need a yeah. new workout. That's, that's how this whole game of life works, you know? So <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I just keep trying to grow with it. And, um, and, I, and I'm with life. I'm with the energy. What it has me do, um, it has changed many times. And like, you know, now again, it's grown into, uh, into music and to, into a whole new space. So I don't know where it's going to go next. I can't comprehend it, but I know I'll serve it. And I know I'll, I'll listen when I, when I hear it, I'm gonna do what it says. Right. So, yeah. Oh man. That's the <laughs> math. I'm doing life, bro. Man, that's <laughs> it. I might have to get that tatted on me or something. Let's man. go. Oh my God. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that's a major one right there. Oh my goodness. So, I mean, Wow, Graham. I mean, thank you for there, there's parts of your story that I didn't even know about in there, man. Oh, wow. and, and one of the things that I admire most about you is how, like you said, you're not holding on to these titles. Like you could have stayed and won the championship every yeah. year at, you know, Mission High School. You could have stayed with the Jazz and just be able yeah. to, you know, at all the family dinners and stuff. Oh, yeah, I work with the <laughs> Utah Jazz. I got this, yeah. you know, this fancy <laughs> title. But you were like, that's cool. But I feel like I have to be reborn. Um, yeah. Have yeah, you yeah. have you ever read The Way of the Superior Man? Is that is that no, should I? Sounds like I should read that. I think so, man. You okay. might want to add that okay. to your list. You know, okay. knowing, knowing as much as I know about you, you know, okay. I, I think you would enjoy that one. But you're already doing everything that it talks about in the book because there's this, this okay. uh, chapter where it talks about as a man and just, as you know, people in general. Yeah, yeah. It's, the book is for men, but it talks about uh, throughout multiple chapters in a man's life, he has to be able to let go of where he's at, die to himself and be reborn. Like Ooh. you have to welcome the seasons of being lost and that's what your, oh. your journey is uh, is outlining, man. Um, Dang, that's I want to take it back to one of them. Sorry, that's ahead, powerful that you said that, man. For anyone listening, like that, that, that thing right there, to surrender and allow yourself to get lost is how you find it. So it's the craziest experience. Like what I know is I don't know. And because I know that, that allows me to go into a space and kind of like not know what's going on, but then I start to figure it out. Not knowing what's going on is gut wrenching, bro. You fall on your face, you know what I mean? Like you, it's like the most humbling experience. But then you learn to walk again, man. So I just, I, I want to really shout out that experience. It's only honestly the last couple of months that I've even acknowledged that I've done that because it's so personal, it's so deep. And you have to. And this is a, in the album I'm putting out. There's a song uh, called "In the Ring," and "In the Ring" is basically like you have to fight your fights alone in the ring. It's you. You have to do it by yourself. You know, like when you watch a great heavyweight fight or something, it's two people in a ring, man. It's not like you can, you can right. have 12 great trainers. Your mama can love you. Your, your, your dad makes great dinner, but none of them can fucking be in there and fight with you. None of them. And so as I go through this transformation, the, this stuff, Taj, it's like you do this stuff alone, bro. And uh, when you do it alone, you there? Oh, are we still there? We good? My bad, folks. Was having some technical difficulties on my end, but you were saying you were talking about heavyweight fighters. How it's just the two of them in the ring. You could have the best coaches, and then yeah. what were you saying after that? Ultimately, when you when you do your work, it's alone. You do it by yourself, and so in the ring means you're willing to go in and face your fears, right? Because no one can be in there with you. You can't have twelve friends with you or money with you or none of that. It's real, right? This is that real spiritual work. And so in the ring is about going in there and doing it. And the whole funny thing, this is what I've noticed. When you go in the ring with your fears, whatever that is, and you face it and you feel alone, you're never alone. And that's the whole funny thing. And, and the thing that wants to meet you is trying to test you and going, come on, get in here. I'm in the ring already. If you come in the ring, I'll meet you. And it's your life force. It's your energy. It's your love. You know, and fear is you in disguise. So when you go towards it, you become stronger and all of a sudden you're in the fight facing your fear and you're like holy shit the hardest thing was just getting in the ring now that i'm here it's like this thing has no chance because all it was hoping for was that i ran away from fear so that's your work uh for me it looks like i'll be by myself i'll be praying i'll be meditating i'll be crying i'll feel all the feelings like you feel all the feelings you know what i mean and inside i'm still like no i want to grow i want to surrender i want to let go i'm and you let that thing die. So the experience of grief, to allow yourself to, to feel grief while you're living, to let aspects of you die so then you can be reborn is 
absolutely paramount. It's the foundation. Now, what does grief feel like? Feels like fucking death, Taj. So it's like the scariest <laughs> thing ever, man. So in this world, you have to surrender to that, you know? And so being able to surrender to that will allow you to grow. If you avoid that death, um, hold on to something that looks like it should be held on to, like 10 million bucks or a title or something, then essentially you die a slow death, you know, because you have stifled life and now you're playing right the math game. You know what I mean? So we have to right. have our foundation in what, what actually is wealth. And again, this is all just my opinion, man. This is not like, this is some, some truth. I'm just saying, Hey, this is what I've noticed. This is what I'm doing. And uh, here I am. Right, man. And, and that fearlessness, that's what's so inspiring about your story and, and just who you are as a person, that fearlessness, that ability to be able to just say, you know, I'm going to do this. I know it's going to suck at times, you know, yeah. uh, quick story. I was listening to a podcast episode you did in 2018. Okay. And this okay. is when I had just started my coaching. I was having a dark night of the soul. I quit my job, nothing else lined up, you know, and that's when I think I initially reached out to you and told you, Hey, I'm working with transitioning athletes. I'm going to do this thing. I have no idea how it's going to happen. And I was listening to an episode where you were talking about, there would be times where you didn't know how rent was going to get paid or, <laughs> you know, and then it would just show up magically, you know, <laughs> like what in those moments, you kind of hit on it already, but in those moments, and just for anybody listening, where you're like, man, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. Or, or even when you latch on to an idea, you're like, okay, this, I'm feeling called to do this. And you may, you're going to have to get your ass beat a little bit throughout the process by, by life. But yeah. what is it that, what advice can you give to people, especially like athletes who are transitioning, you know, dying out of their sport and yeah. having to be reborn in a new area? Can you give some advice to those athletes who may be tuned yeah. in um, just about how to how to get through that process? Because yeah. you make it sound easy, man. But we, yeah, like no, said, let's, it's not let's easy at all. <laughs> um, I'm giving you the juice right now to do the work and let you know you can come out on the other side. hundred percent. It's a hundred percent guarantee if you do it. This is not a question, right? There's no question whatsoever. This work absolutely works. Um, if, you know, I mean, if you wake up tomorrow, it works. Now, I don't know if we're not going to wake up. You know what I mean? Like, we don't know when our day is called, but if you wake up, this works. So I start with that energy because I'm a living testament of it. Like, look at the vibrancy in me. You know, it's real. And I mean that. So now we come back to, okay, what's the actual experience like? You know what I mean? Like, okay, so, since we know it works, <laughs> and by knowing it works, that means your trust is all the way in, right? So now we got to go to faith. Because you're like, look, and we know it works. So factually, don't, don't not do that. You know what I mean? Like, we know it works. Now, what is it going to feel like? You're going to feel a lot of feelings. So if you look at it like an athlete, an athlete, when you go and do a good workout, lifting weights, right? In general, what I've noticed about athletes is you embrace being uncomfortable. So you might be like, hey, hey, my muscles are burning, but like, hey, this is okay. And if I do three more of these and just breathe right, pff, this is actually what I want. And a good coach is like, you got it hang in there, Taj, get two more. And you're like, I don't know. I don't know. Your mind's like, I don't know. I don't know. And then you do the two more and you're like, oh shit, I did it. And the strength coach was like, I already knew you had it in you. You just didn't know it was scary. And then you realize, okay, my muscles have it. Now, how did it feel? Oh, the muscles were, ugh. you know what I mean? The next day you might have a tough time sitting down. They're sore. You got to recover, but yet they grow. And then 10 days later, you're like, I'm stronger. You know what I mean? So you're going to go through the same process when you transition when you go through any of these processes so for me the feeling was um, you're going to feel sad you're going to feel scared you're going to feel lost you're going to feel lonely this is the way i can describe it if you have filled yourself up with a certain thing that's not the most powerful thing and we want to fill ourselves up with something more powerful the very first thing we have to do is empty ourselves right so if you're like mm. i have been a great i'm a football player I'm a great football player and you got money, you got all this shit. It's up to here. You're like, well, guess what? Clearly you're a human being who's doing football. And I don't even think you're doing football anymore. So we have to empty all of this first. And then we're going to fill it back up with the next thing in life. It's going to be super fulfilling. But what does being empty feel like, Taj? <laughs> it feels empty, man. But if you know <laughs> that's the feeling that you're trying to get to, Right. So if you go, OK, I'm done playing football or I'm done playing basketball, whatever you're doing in life and you know it's time to transition. Clearly, you want to empty that because you're like, I'm trying to transition. The challenge is we'll hold on to that a little bit because there's a comfort to it. So here the thing is, you're going to feel uncomfortable. We're going to go through it. It's just like working out. So let's embrace the same model and let's think about the first thing I got to do is empty. So when I empty, 
here's what I do. How do I take care of myself when I'm empty? And right, this is self-love. So you have to have a plan to take care of yourself because that empty feeling is empty. It can feel scary, but if you go, okay, I'm eating good. I got some loved ones around me who are supporting me on this, some sort of support system. I'm exercising, I'm working out. It's the foundation of everything. Um, I'm being very mindful right now. Um, I've either got good, I got a good therapist with me, a good coach, good counselor, you know, someone who's my ally with me, walking me through this, a coach, because I want to empty so then I can let the next level come in. I've done this with so many people that I know it works. And I thank you for reminding me to come back to remind what it feels like when you first started to empty. You're like, why would I empty? Because if you empty, you can get to a whole new level. And when I started doing this with Navy mm. Steels, and you know, Navy SEALs, man, it's on the line. Like that's, it's not a game. You know what I mean? Like it's a, it's a real life. And I remember talking to this one Navy SEAL and he was like, empty. I don't want to do that shit. And I was like, Hey man, like what's tougher emptying yourself or not emptying yourself? Which one's more badass? And he was like, Oh, emptying myself is much more badass because it's much more scary. And uh, you know, and I was like, well, what if we embrace that? What if we lean into it? And he goes, well, I don't know what's going to happen next. You know, and I was like, well, embrace that, you know, let's embrace that we don't know, you know, so I think that's a big part of all this dodge is embracing that what we don't know, but then letting ourselves empty. Oh, we back. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, you're back. Am I good? Am I clear? Yeah. So listen, I don't know if this happens to you, but energy is real. Mm -hmm. This shit happens to me all the time when I do podcasts, all the time. <laughs> and when I and when I actually look at it when it happens, it happens during lit moments in a conversation. So I'm literally trying to calm my energy down so I don't impact shit like this. So it doesn't like interfere interfere with like waves going on. At this point, it happens so much in my life. I'm like, all right, man. Like, so I'm like, you know, shit's real. And just because we can't see it, sometimes I'm like, man, that's things are happening. You know what I mean? I've had things freeze right. up so many times. I'm like, okay. All right. So <laughs> All, all, so my, my point I was, was saying real quick, Taj, was that you got to empty yourself. You know what I mean? That's the mm -hmm. workout. So you just need a support system around you to do that. And if you know being empty is the good thing, when you feel empty, when you grieve that loss, because you're going to grieve the loss of everything you've been holding on to, therefore you can go, you go through the grieving experience. So for me, crying, sadness, uh, then prayer, meditation. When I'm crying, I'm like, oh my God, it's so sad to lose this. This feels so sad, but I'm with you, God. Let me transition. Let me keep going. You know, that's my affirmation. I want to grow. I'm willing to let go. And then you just go through the experience. And maybe I cry for like an hour or something like that. And then after I'm like, okay, let me go eat some food. And then I kind of work out a little bit. And you're like, I can actually keep going. But you, you have to grieve for a little while. And then you grieve and you grieve. And then a little, little, little ray of hope comes in. And uh, a ray of hope is the first time you see the next light coming and as soon as you see that next light coming you go oh my god it was all worth it you know and you go oh right. my god I can't, I can't believe it and then once you know that process happens then you can do this transformation again again and again in your life every couple years or whatever it needs to happen because this is growth right this is a caterpillar to a butterfly you have to break your mold to learn to fly and that caterpillar that's like, I don't know. It's like, bro, do you know you can fly? And the caterpillar doesn't know that shit. So it has to let itself like break <laughs> open. And then it just like takes off, you know, and no butterfly ever wants to go back to being a caterpillar. So it, once you go through this once, then you know the process. You got to be willing to do it. So it helps to have someone like you, Taj, someone like me, someone in their corner who's like, okay, this is how the process works. You know, yes, you have to manage your shit. You got to be meditating. You got to be doing your work. You can't not be eating right. You can't not be working out. That's not going to work because you won't have the energy to deal with this stuff, you know, because it's intense. So you have to take care of yourself. And then that ray of hope shows up and then that little bit of light comes in you and then it slowly starts to fill you up. And then you're like, oh, here we go. The next, the next level. <laughs> you know? Right, right. And then you yeah. grow. And then oh, you're like, man. that's growth. What an experience. Insane. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. I got a page full of notes over here, Graham. This is this is phenomenal, okay. man. Thank you for just letting that shine oh, through you, man. It's so funny how you said Zoom. Zoom can't handle your energy, man. It's not ready for you. It's like <laughs> Zoom is just shutting down with all that energy you got, man. I, I I mean, I might be making that up, but it happens so many times. I'm just like, and it'll if you look at the moments it happened, we'll be going. So I'm like, okay, just mm -hmm. maybe calm it down because we open up a channel of energy. I mean, 
there's no cords connecting our cell phones. So this all is energy. It's stuff you can't see, but it's, it's connected in ways, you know what I mean? So I think as we right. come into like, we're learning about all this stuff now, man. Uh, I think we are, we look very rudimentary to how we'll look in like a hundred, 200 years. And I don't mean technology like cell phones. We are the greatest technology of all time. We are the ones that made cell phones. That's a fucking nothing compared to what we are. We don't even know how to manage our own shit. And I think the more we learn to manage our own selves, hell yeah, we have telepathic abilities, uh, levitation, all that stuff. Man, if you get like seven, eight billion people on the same page with consciousness, do you know what's, what we're capable of doing? Now, I don't know if we're close to that, but I, I have a, some insight that like, yeah, man, we're capable of doing stuff far beyond what we can even comprehend, you know, right now. For right. sure, man. And I'm open yeah. to that. I want to experience that stuff in my life, you know? I'm open to stuff like that. So I'm, I'm curious to see where it goes. Yeah, man. I feel like it's all, we're, we're living through a time where it's all sort of coming to a head, kind of like you're talking about, people being able to uh -huh. tap into that, which is why there's such a, I feel like there's such a pull in the opposite direction with divisiveness and, you know, people being distracted without, or being distracted from tapping into them, their true selves or being connected <laughs> to other human beings. So do you think that we'll see that in our lifetimes, this, this connectedness to source and to each other that so. you're talking about? Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I hope so. I, I know that's what everyone craves deep down. You know, everyone wants to connect right. to, um, I think we've gone through a long time where we looked to get to it through other people, almost like a middle person, you know, where like, whenever I'm coaching someone, Taj, I'll be like, okay, I'm coaching you to get to it. You're not here to follow me. Now, initially what you'll follow in me is what comes through me. And I get that. No problem with that. But what I'm going to teach you is how to, how, how you can connect to it. Because if you follow me, that's not it. I'm one step away from it. And yeah, it comes through me strong, but I'm not even close. To, I'm not even it, you know? So absolutely, I think the teaching right. have to be, we have to connect and we got to start when kids are five, six, seven years old, start introducing this, that they have it, they connect to it, and it's connecting to it right now. It's not, hey, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I totally get that sentence. It's what are you doing right now? And we have to bring people back to managing it right now because the math game starts when someone says, what are you doing when you grow up? And all of a sudden you're like 10 years down the road, like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You know what I mean? And you have a tough time managing now. And right. like, I have, I'm not saying that I have a vision and dream. I'm not saying that, but like, we have to learn to manage right now. You know, we have to learn to like deal with this stuff now. And I think that opens us up to answer your question to, to other dimensions of consciousness uh, that I hope we do in this in this lifetime. I do think it has to be taught systematically to kids. I mean, we were taught math, mm -hmm. right? You were you were taught to get a GPA in high school, right? You were taught to get like SAT score. That's all math, and so nothing wrong with that. But that's ran its course. Like getting a 4.0, no one asks what's your GPA in life. They just they just are checking you out how present you are now. You know how much you're here. <laughs> that's not like a 4.2 can't do that for you. Um, so I think we need to practice. <laughs> right. We need to practice. I'm not saying like, look, get a good GPA, but that's, that's still judging what is we need to get better at just being here, man. Um, and then I think like my journey in life, I could have never, I didn't have some 10 year plan to become like a musician and do all that. I literally was like, I'm a vessel. Uh, I'm supposed to walk down and coach this JV team. And I don't know what's going to happen after that. I'm just going to stick with this shit, you know? And then it just kind of unfolds after that. But I had the ability to manage it every day and stick with it and not get into the math because mm. the math was horrendous. The math was horrendous right. for me, bro. But I was like, the magic is so strong. <laughs> so what do I do? You know what I mean? Because most people say one day when I get enough math, I'll go do the magic. I was like, what do you do if you can do the magic right now? Come on, that's the wealthiest thing of Boom. all time. Why not, why not just do it first? And so I've, right. I want the magic to turn into math Instead of you, you anxiously do math your whole life and then one day try to do magic, you know, that's, that's the idea. Bars. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> Drop the gym after gym, man. Let that magic turn into math. Do you hear that? Yeah. Everybody, yeah. It. let that magic turn. Not the other way around. It's that's always it. going to be time to do the math. If you do your magic long enough, like, like Graham did, like I've been doing for the past few years, that magic turns into math. All you got to do is stay with it, man. That's, oh, man. Um, I want to get into the mindset music. I want to talk about the upcoming album. But before we do that, I just want to touch on something you said, because I never really heard it phrased like this before. Yeah. Um, and I think there's a lot of parallels between like asking kids, what do you want to do when you grow up? And the same thing that I see with athletes or just people in general transitioning out of it. Like, what are you going to do? 
And the focus is always on what are you going to do versus who do you want to be or better yet, who are you, who are you becoming now, you know? Yeah. And I, I think that's a huge point that you brought up because that makes me like, I don't have kids yet, but when I do, that's, that's such a good way to think about it. Like keep them focused on who are you turning into? Not what do you want to be 10 years from now when you reach this point? And, yes. and half the time, you know this, when you ask them what, what you want to do when they grow up, or even when you ask a, a former college player, former professional player, what are you going to do now? It forces them to kind of search for an answer that's going to please everybody else, like yeah, yeah. something external, instead of going within and being like, I'm going to do this because this fills me up, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that was really great the way you phrased it. Man, you, your kids are lucky, man. They got a, <laughs> they got a great, they got some great parents yeah. over there, man. But they they hear my shit all the time. We They, they, don't, they don't like... They don't play my music. Like I'm really conscious of not coaching <laughs> them at all, you know, cause I'm aware of what I'm aware of. And I just be natural for them. The, the thing I do for them is I always tell them they have it right now. Like we don't ask them what they're going to do later on in life. We're like, look, you're going to, mm-hmm. you're going to do whatever that is. It'll still be the present moment. So we help them just like learn. You got it right now. It's not like right. one day they become capable of doing magic. Kids are better at doing magic than adults. Because they, you ha- they haven't got caught up in the right. math game yet. You know, so they're born, pre- they already know how to do mm-hmm. all this shit, man. They live in that world of creation and they live in that world of imagination. And, you know, yes, you have to have adult discipline to make it happen. But, man, we, we try to just let them be in that, in that power now, let them know they have it. And, uh, you know, honestly, we don't know if we're going to be here in 10 years. So we're grateful for now. So, we, you know, we try to really appreciate that. And there's so much pressure I see with kids anxiously running to results right? Anxiously thinking it's somewhere in 10 years. So we work, I work on a concept all the time called walk to win, which is basically like, don't, don't run to results. Don't do that. Take your time, come back to where we are, get back into the moment. You got to have lethal patience. I think the word patience for so long has been thought of, thought of as kind of like soft, like, oh, patience. Patience is like the greatest thing of all time, because why would you hurry through something? If I'm eating ice cream, I'm not eating ice cream. So after you can tell me how good I did at eating ice cream. I'm eating ice cream because it tastes good right now. You know what I'm saying? So why would I hurry through that shit? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, that's what's know, up, man. man. I, yeah. That was a great analogy, the ice cream analogy. Um, I want to dive into the music now, man. This is, um, yeah, yeah. and I heard another podcast. I probably should have asked you this before we started rolling, but I heard another podcast where they basically played one of the, the music, uh, the mindset music before oh, okay. the episode. Yeah. Would you mind if I did that before this episode? Is that Come on, man. Play okay? it all. Yep. Hold on one second. Okay. Hey, come on in. Sorry, come on in. Yep. Uh, man, play it all. Play it all, man. I would love it. Any any support with that is fabulous, man. So I know I appreciate that. Um, no, that's of course, absolutely. Awesome. Okay, I'll make sure I put that at the beginning. But um, I want to talk about this real quick before I let you go. I want to be respectful of your time. I want to talk about this next chapter you're on right now. This new rebirth that you're going through. Yeah, with the yeah. Music. Um, when can we expect the album? When is the album coming out? Yeah, yeah. Well, J- okay. So I actually, I released an album in 2017 called Unlock. So mm-hmm. it was my first studio album. Um, that one's there. And then I'm actually working on four albums right now. And so it's all just downloaded to me in the last like year and a half. I'm working with a couple producers. On January 30th, I'm going to drop an album called Enter the Zone. And it's 12 songs long and it's designed to help you get into the zone. And this album has some heat to it. So the beat, this is going to be like raise your energy up type shit. You know what I mean? The vibe is, is mm-hmm. up. Where a lot of the songs I've been sending you, excuse me, recently are kind of more mellow out songs. So the idea with mindset music is you become aware: do I need to get up, or do I need to come down to get into the zone? You know. So January thirtieth, I'm dropping Enter the Zone, and then I'm also dropping an album called Reflect. All the songs I've been sending you so far, those are all from the album Reflect which are all designed to go in to help you rewire yourself in, be introspective, come in. And then after Reflect, the album, the next album is called Respond. And Respond is firepower. Wow. Respond is going to be like, once you line your shit up, there ain't no mercy after that, bro. There's no mercy. You know what I mean? I, I'm here oh, to serve. Right. You know, that's when you're like, if I need to be broke for 10 years, so fucking be it, man. So be it. I'm with God. Like, I've lined my shit up. So you respond with firepower. You're not angry. You're not mad, but you're responding. Um, And then the third album after that is Recover. And that is how do I recover after using all this energy and then do the whole process again? Reflect, respond, recover. So that's a trilogy. 
and then enter the zone is just its own thing. I'm just dropping that album uh, and I'm doing a show on January 30th and enter the zone show. Uh, and I'm going to do a show every month this year as a way to kind of just start bringing this to the world, you know? Yeah. Wow. That's all. And the show yeah. is going to be live. Are you doing, are you yeah, doing it'll like be live. live? It'll be a live event. And at least for the first six, maybe seven shows because of COVID, right. We're going to do it all online. So we're finding different platforms to do it where we can reach people everywhere. Um, I got like a band with me, man. Like I got producers, they play keyboard, bass, they can sing. Um, I got an MC. I got all kinds of people I work with. So I have a vision where this is going or at least what like God has put in me. And I'm like, all right, if I keep serving it, we'll just, we'll see where it goes. But man, music moves mindset with ease. You know, it's just mm -hmm. ease. And you can have your headphones on anywhere, in mean, your car, pregame you know, anything like that. So um, yeah, we're gonna be doing shows. And for me, it's more growth for me, you know, cause even when I say like, oh, I gotta do a show, I can feel my heart start beating. I'm like, oh shit, like it's, <laughs> it's real, you know, <laughs> it's real, right. <laughs> it's real. So that's the growth again, right? That's the rebirth, you know, high school basketball peaked, reinvent myself, NBA peak, you know, reinvent myself music. So now I'm kind of like that rookie in music, like, oh shit, my heart is pounding. I got to go do this thing. And I love that, man. You know what I mean? Like I get to do, I get to start from scratch all over again, you know? So, man, that's phenomenal, Graham. I'm so excited for that, man. I'm excited for these albums because that's some real artistry, man. Talk about that's pushing right. yourself out of your limits, like, and doing live shows. Like you're real live art. Like that's major. You're not just a coach anymore. You're an artist as well. You're that's producing right. art art that has an impact on people on, mentally, bro. spiritually, you know, emotionally. That's, that's major. Oh man. And I went for I let a time. Yeah, oh, let me, and this, this is how you know I went for it. Mm -hmm. And I say this uh, humbly. Um, if you Google my name, it looks like I'm some expert in basketball mental training. You know what I mean? Like it, that, that shit comes up. And so on all of my titles now, I put recording artist. And so that allows me to go, <laughs> it allows me to go back to the very bottom and show that I can, you can do this process again, that re like, once you make it to a certain place, the whole key is you let go of that. So your energy can keep expanding and growing, you know? So now I am a recording artist and I own that. I operate like it. Like it. I got a built a studio in my house. Um, I got my partner here right now who I went to grad school with. We practice every day, you know? Uh, we got mics behind us, professional shit. Like we, we get up and do shows, you know? And uh, so to have the courage for me, this growth to be like leaving something where I'm on top and I left the jazz and literally they were like, bro, how much money do you want? You got the green light. And I was like, oh, I got to leave. And that's crazy to me, you know? And, but, <laughs> I, but, but yet I'm so grounded in the magic. I was like, that math can't hold me, bro. That, cause that math can't hold me, you know? And so the magic right. can hold me. So and to go into this artist space, I appreciate you saying that because I am a recording artist. I have transformed into that. And uh, last three years, that's what I've been doing, you know? So <laughs> that's right. I am. I hear the I am. Whatever you say is the I am. Let it be so. You know what I mean? That's, oh, that's, that's right. amazing, Graham. Uh, this has been phenomenal, man. This, I feel like we only scratched the surface. Uh, I'm gonna have, we're going to have to have you back on the show just to dive Let's deeper go. into some of these topics, man. But I really do appreciate your time today. This is this is a surreal moment for me. Like I was telling you, for me to just be able to have a conversation with you, let alone interview you. Uh, uh, before we get out of here, please tell people how they can follow up with everything you're doing, reach out to you on social media, all that good stuff. Um, check me out. I'm uh, Graham the Guide on Instagram. I'm going to start doing some TikTok stuff soon. I want to put the music out. I'm going to make a music video every month for each song I do. So we're going to put it out like that. Wow. And then uh, I, have a, I have a website, grahambetchart.com. That's where you can kind of figure out, you know, all the shit I'm up to and all the stuff I'm doing. So you can email me there. Anyone reach out, say hello. I respond to everyone, connect. You know, I'm here. So happy to help. Amazing, man. Everybody, please go check all that stuff out. Uh, I can't wait for the music videos, man. That's even, and I got even more stuff to look forward to. So, man, yeah, I'll, thank I'll you send again, you some Graham. stuff right now. I'll, I'm going to send you some stuff. I just built some videos for the Navy. And I'm going to send you to it. And we designed it to be like music videos because we want to open people's mind to it in, in a fun way, you know, a creative way. So I'm going to send it to you so you can check it out right. for sure. That's dope. Please do, man. Well, everybody, thank you for tuning in. I know you got so many gems are dropped on this. This is why we got to have Graham back on the show. This has been another great <laughs> episode of the Power of Story podcast and Thrive After Sports. Thank you all for tuning in with Graham Metchart. We'll see you next time. Peace. Right on.